another episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is Cycle 1, Week 24, Science. And for everyone else, that just means that we're going to be talking about some markings on a globe and why those markings are important when looking and determining where something is. This is our last episode for this semester until we start up again in the fall. But I do want to let you know that um, all of the videos for cycle two for my CC students are going to be available at the beginning of the year, come about August of 20 of this year, 2025. I also plan on releasing um, a workbook for both science and history this summer. Um, and so look for that. That will be released in um, July, also of this year, 2025. And without further ado, let's start doodling. Like I said, today we are going to be talking about some markings on the globe and why they're important to know. So previously, we've talked a little bit about maps and some of the characteristics of a map. Um, a map is a drawing of all or part of the Earth's surface. And its ba basic purpose is to show where things are. And so there are different types of maps and some may show visible features such as rivers, lakes, forests, buildings, and roads. And they also might show things that cannot be seen like boundaries between counties, states, or countries, as well as temperatures at those places if it's a digital map. Now, most maps are drawn on a flat surface, but if there is a map that is displayed on a round surface, we typically call this a globe. Globes provide pretty much the same kind of information that a flat map would, but because the Earth is almost round, a globe is the best representation we have of the Earth. So truly, a globe shows how the Earth would look like if we were in outer space looking down on it. Now, any place on Earth can be located using a system called latitude and longitude. And these are sets of imaginary lines that circle the earth. And latitude and longitude lines are some of the things that can be seen on a map and a globe. Lines of latitude run east and west horizontally. A good way to remember that the latitude lines are the horizontal lines is thinking, okay, latitude, latitude. It is the width. Now, longitude lines, on the other hand, are the lines that run north and south and are the length. And a way to remember this is longitude, longitude. So, like I said, any place on the whole earth can be found by this system of latitude and longitude. Next up to talk about is the prime meridian. And the prime meridian is an imaginary line that divides the earth into two equal parts, long ways. There's the eastern hemisphere and the western hemisphere. The prime meridian is also the basis for the world's time zones, as well as the starting point for measuring that longitude system that we talked about. So the prime meridian is at zero degrees longitude. The lines of longitude east of the prime meridian are numbered from one to 179 degrees east and lines of longitude west of the prime meridian are numbered from 1 to 179 degrees west. Another name for the prime, prime meridian can also be called the Greenwich 
meridian. And this is due to the fact that the prime meridian passes through Greenwich, England. And there's a short little history about why it passes through Greenwich, England. Before 1884, map makers would begin numbering the lines of longitude on their maps at whichever meridian passed through their specific site of their national observatory. And so many people typically used British maps because they were a leader in exploration as well as map making. And so instead of creating confusion, scientists were able to decide in 1884 that the starting point of longitude for everyone should just be that meridian that runs through Britain's Royal Observatory in Greenwich. Hence the nickname, the Greenwich Meridian. Let's talk a little bit more about latitude and the equator. So just like longitude is measured in degrees, similarly, latitude is measured in degrees as well from the equator. So what is the equator? Well, geographers or people who study the earth have divided the planet into two sets of two hemispheres. And we've already talked about the Eastern and Western hemispheres but we haven't talked about the Northern and Southern hemispheres. Just like the Eastern and Western hemispheres are divided by the prime meridian, the Northern and Southern hemispheres are divided also by an imaginary line called the equator. This is a line that runs east to west around the Earth's middle and is the starting point for latitude. And so the equator is located at zero degrees latitude. Places north of the equator are part of the northern hemisphere and places south of the equator are in the southern hemisphere. And so the lines go up from the equator in degrees and they are measured from zero to 90 degrees north and zero to 90 degrees south. Some places in the northern hemisphere include North America, Central America, Europe, and mainland Asia, as well as about half of Africa and a little bit of South America. Some places in the Southern Hemisphere include the rest of Africa, most of South America, and all of Australia and Antarctica. And so you can see how important it is to know what the markings on your globe are when determining where something is in the world. And that's all we have for today. Remember, Doodling Through Education will be back for cycle two. So look forward to that in the summer and fall. Until then, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care.